Oh, Taysom Hill time was delightful and a disaster. Get Kenny Stills off my TV. The Saints, about the only thing that has cured bad football teams the last 50 years, they get it this weekend. They play the Jets. Thomas hit the intro. Hey, Ralph. Ralphie, Andrew, and Dave. All right, I got uh, a little intel. Your Saints Happy Hour podcast? Yeah, yeah. It's a joke, all right? And I'll tell you what. You, Ralph, you mispronounce everything, okay? I listen, I go, what the? Does he not know the English language? All right, Ralph. I try to get an English class in there every now and then, okay, pal? Hey, Andrew! Think you're smart, huh? Think you're smart? You're in big trouble, pal. You piece of shit like you for breakfast. And then, of course, there's Dave. Dave, a little obnoxious? Got a little bit of a chip on your shoulder, huh? You gotta get, cut people down all the time. Is that what you gotta do? But uh, know that life is good. Appreciate it. Do what you do. Keep on keeping on. Shoot her out. <laughs> all right, everybody. Welcome to another Just a Saints Happy Hour podcast. We are live on Twitch. If you aren't, follow us on Twitch. And remember to subscribe to Saints Happy Hour wherever you get your podcast. And become a patron uh, an annual patron to get the best Saints podcast every day, and you get too much for free, and you get the Saints Survivor Mall mug, and Lord knows you're going to need that mug for the season, the offseason, the draft, all of it. Uh, we got to thank people. We had one new sub since our last show, Terminal LT. He subbed with Prime. Thank you, Terminal. And just before the stream, Brett in Lafayette, he subbed for three months with Prime. That's the way to do it. In December, guys, you know what it means. If you sub with Amazon Prime last month, you could sub again this month too. You basically get one totally free sub each month. All you have to do is click the subscribe button below the stream, the stream and choose the option, subscribe with Prime. Show us some love because it doesn't cost you anything and it helps us a lot. And now you also get access to our amazing Discord community. Just DM us. Say you're a Twitch Prime supporter, and we'll give you the Discord invite. Boom, Thomas, who was that that just subscribed? I heard the uh, chat. Daniel, da- Daniel Davel uh, subscribed with, for, with Prime for two months and said, Paul, for the listeners, do you prefer Podcast Ralph or Twitter Ralph? <laughs> mm. I got to make Tough the call. poll. I got to make the Tough poll. call. All right, so what are we drinking? Dave, I'm glad you decided to stop playing whatever board games you have stacked up there. Clue, <laughs> Mousetrap, and join us for the podcast. Wh- this, what is, you- this is the new setup. I, I don't know. know if, I, I don't know if those at home that are listening can tell a difference. I, I, Ralph spoiled me this Christmas season. <laughs> He's my sugar daddy. And he bought me one of these fancy blue Yetis. No, the patrons bought you that Yeti. That's Dave. true. That Not actually, me. that good. You know what, Ralph? Good point. Thank you to everybody who's listening to this right now. Some of you guys, I think, helped purchase this microphone, and I hope it sounds better. Damn. I think it, he sounds I think better sounds than Ralph. Pretty. He does. Think, it, wow. It hurts wow. my heart. The quality heart. is too good. It's too good. You got you got to drop it or something, Dave. I'm I'm whispering. Can you hear me? The quality on this microphone is so good. I'm whispering, and it still sounds better than Kevin. Damn. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I am drinking uh, Grace and Grit from uh, Great Raft uh, in Shreveport. It's actually double dry hopped Grace and Grit. It's actually a special. I'm drinking Blue Moon Mango. It mm-hmm. is not that good. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about blue. But it tastes 35 percent better because it's in the Saints Survival mug. Get them while they're hot, kids. There's only 40 of them left. It's a scientific fact. It's been studied (laughs) by professionals. So, Andrew, here's the thing: despite the four turnovers and the calamity that was the fourth quarter. I enjoyed the Taysom Hill experience, and I want it for the rest of 2021, even if his finger fell off because he's got he's got a um, mullet finger or whatever the hell um now i think it's mallet finger <laughs> yes. I'll, mullet yes. finger sounds it's funny funny mullet finger business in the front party in the back. in the back but i mean andrew like the taste experience like it's cool like we 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 want we wanted the rest of the year right yeah i mean he ran for 100 yards 
you know, um, offensively, they they weren't getting yards. They weren't putting up points in the first half. He he did both of those things. They were moving the football. Mm-hmm. Look, I, I was concerned about his throwing ability before the finger injury. You know, <laughs> his ability to process, his ability to make good reads, all that stuff. And now, on top of that, you add this injury that happened where you can see right here he he hits his finger unbelievable by the way that this would happen in the first quarter of his first start yeah that's just the Saints season in a nutshell okay so is that is that is that when it happened because I was at the game and when you were at the game you didn't know any of this was going on you had no clue this was I guess unless maybe you were checking you saw him go in the tent though right no no I I did not I had I missed that totally that's that's on the further end of the Saints sideline so no I I missed all of that I had no idea and it was a shame too Andrew because I could tell though on the you know you you could you could tell later in the game like he was you know his throws were just everything was in the dirt yeah I mean everything was in the dirt the shame of it was guys the foot looked amazing like i didn't if yeah. you if you hadn't told me that he had plantar fasciitis i wouldn't even have noticed it like he looked running yeah. he I looked mean, as good as ever freaking hopped over a dude yeah look at that i, I mean that's, come on that's amazing uh, um no i mean look <sighs> Taysom, Taysom, when 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 the saints were down when they needed to score you know Taysom took over the game and he yeah. started using his feet and he started making plays with his feet and i have to be honest with you it seemed like they got away from that and it's i, I kind of wanted them just to just, just to see them keep doing that <laughs> Run and i know Taysom like power into the ground well i, I felt like they I, were i mean in, like you, I, i'm not saying like i'm not saying like every play should have been a called run but i'm just saying like run your usual plays have Taysom drop back as if he's going to pass the ball. Have everybody run their routes, but uh, but for the most part, let's have Taysom in his mind be thinking, "I'm going to run as much as possible." I mean, the Cowboys were not stopping it; they were not stopping it at all, and the, and the Saints had nothing else going. Uh, the running game was meh. Mark Ingram was meh. I hate to say it, uh, and obviously, you know, receiving whatever um, they needed to score, they needed to move the ball, and. Sitting there at the game in that moment, Taysom running the ball was the only thing that was working, was the only thing that was moving the chains. Nice and, goodbye, nice uh, Irish goodbye by Deontay Harris, the 70 yeah, yard touchdown. That's before he that messed up. Three weeks. Kevin and I would have nailed our we guessed we we guessed 27 to 10 in our prediction contest. Spoiler alert, and that yeah, spoiler alert, that, that messed that, it up. <laughs> yeah, that screwed it up. We would have nailed it, we would have had it absolutely right, but. Anyway, I don't know. I just, honestly, I would have loved to have seen more from Taysom on, on his feet. Well, here's my question, Andrew. And the passing wasn't working. If, if they, if I didn't even, I didn't know that Taysom's finger was injured, but I'm sitting there watching the game and I'm yeah. saying the pa- the pa- the passing game is not working. He's not making these passes. He's not hitting these passes. Uh, while I'm watching it, I don't know what's wrong, but it doesn't matter. I, the problem is still there and he's not yeah. making these passes. Well, and I see him making these plays with his feet. And so just naturally I'm sitting there thinking, keep doing more of that and and less of what's you know, do more of what's working and less of what's not working. Um he, so well, he, I, you know, well, that, he can't run on every play. So well, here's, I here's you say that, you say that, but I, I don't know. Here's and, my and and, and and the other thing I'll say, and I'll, and I'll and I'll end, but like we've seen the Eagles and Jalen Hurts, and I don't know, I think they need to kind of go in that direction, uh, as far as like an offense. I could think if they're gonna be if yeah, that's what gonna, I, that's what I said all along. If yeah. if Taysom's going to be successful cuz he's not a passer, he's just like Jalen. He he can make some Ooh. throws every now and then. He's not going to make all the throws, but damn if he isn't an a talented runner and a talented playmaker. Uh so run an offense like the Eagles run with Jalen Hurts. Well, here's the thing though, the Eagles they kind of look better with Gardner Minshew today, but here's here's my question Andrew because look, I'm for playing Taysom the last 5 weeks or, you know, whatever it is, because it's just more interesting and more fun than Simeon. But here's my question. Is his injured finger going to make it to where he's just not going to be good enough throwing the ball and the Saints are going to be the Eagles when teams are like, okay, just stop Jalen Hurts from running the ball. And what happens to them is they play the Giants and they score seven points. So are you concerned yeah. that he's just not going to be able to throw the ball good enough? Because I felt like 
Definitely. That game against Dallas, he couldn't really throw the ball good enough. I mean, he threw four picks. He was 19 of 41. Ugh. Now, he didn't get much help. Um, I will say the offensive line played much better than I expected them to. Um, the tackles, James Hurst and Jordan Mills, they, they held up okay, actually. And that was a big concern going in. No Armstead, no Ramchek. Uh, but, you know, he didn't have Alvin Kamara. So uh, the watching the injury report is going to be really interesting this week. Um, Davenport, Kamara, Ramchek, Armstead. I mean, they at this Davenport. point... They've had, they've had so many injuries that it's just kind of like, at this point, I think we're all like, whatever. Every week, we see these guys are out, and we're just like, that's just another guy. Well, I mean, it's, I am, every, half I the am, team is injured doesn't even make a difference. But <laughs> getting those four guys back would make a huge difference in the prospects of beating the Jets. But to answer your question, Ralph, yes, I am concerned about his finger. I don't know that he can throw consistently and properly with what's going on with his hand. So right now, he, he, he's so good running the football. And we, we know Trevor Simeon is a known quantity. I don't know what's going to happen with Taysom, but I at least want to try it. Well, and that's a good segue because here's the thing. I want to talk about the thing you mentioned about they didn't get any help. And, and, and as the kids like to say, Dave, Taysom and Sean Payton, I want them to tell us that they hate Kenny Stills without telling us they hate Kenny Stills. Thomas, play that sound bite. You know, look, you're trying to give your guys opportunities to make plays. That play was designed for that exact coverage. Um, that's what we were trying to do. So, yeah, disappointing that the, the play turned out to be an interception, but that's one that I'm not, you know, I'm not going to beat myself up over. I'll be honest with you. We got to catch that, that, that first interception. We got, we got to, it's the perfect coverage look we get. We drop a ball, they make a good play on it. That's unfortunate. You know, look, you're trying to give your guys opportunities I mean, to make plays. Andrew, I can feel Sean Payton wanting to say, I've seen enough. Like, he's this close with Kenny Stills. This close. Please, please be rid of Kenny Stills. I don't, I don't want him I on don't my understand, team I don't understand how or he's still on this team. I don't. I, I don't get it, man. And I know that there is some I – don't, I don't even want to call it value because he provides no value. But I think there is mm -hmm. some – mentality with Sean Payton that he likes having Kenny Stills because he knows the offense and he he knows that he's been in the offense before and he can trust that from a his head's not going to swim from an alignment standpoint it's really hard to add a receiver that hasn't been on the team and think that he's going to absorb that playbook or be able to do a lot of snaps at different positions right so that's kind of like they're not going to be able to sign a receiver that's available that's going to help them at all right now. So your other options are Kwan Baker, who's on your practice yes. squad, or Aesop Winston, who's on your yes. practice squad. Who? Those are the other two guys. And, <laughs> Either. And, and they haven't been in the system nearly as long as still. So I think that's what, that's Stop probably it. his reservation. Get some help. And that's why he's, you know... <laughs> He's not he's not making that move, I think, just because he feels like Kenny Stills has a deeper understanding of the offense. But like at this point, I, I don't care how bad they are. I would rather see anyone than Kenny Stills. Anyway. I mean, Dave, Andrew had this stat that like Kenny Stills is the worst receiver in Saints history. And it was some I heard that. I heard that on the it was like show. he's and got I, the I gotta lowest say, catch I was... percentage of anybody that had 20 passes thrown to them. Like yeah, well, and let, I me, was... let me throw this out. He has five catches on 21 targets. It's uh it's uh Ooh. it's a catch percentage of twenty less than twenty, it's twenty two point seven percent. Yeah. The next worst receiver in the entire right. league is ten points higher. Sorry, Minimum twenty catches. 13 points at minimum 20, 20 targets. Target, yeah. 20 targets. The, the next worst receiver in the league right now is 13 points higher. And the worst receiver in Saints history since this statistic has been tracked is the second time Meacham came back to the Saints. He was at 35%, which is 13% higher than where okay. Stills is at right now. This and is, I this felt is still, like I Stills is actually literally statistically the worst receiver in the league this year, in the entire NFL. When it comes to catch percentage, and he is also the worst in Saints history since the statistic has been tracked. Ooh. You know what this is. You know God, what this is I like. I hate to hear that. Gonna, I hate to hear that. I'm gonna remember this statistic because this is just like the Jason David stat 
of being worse than a hole in the zone. Yeah, uh, but you can't, you can't, you can't be, you can't put a chair at receiver because you gotta have, you gotta have a person to catch the ball. Uh, Jason no, David, you could literally just put a chair out there. I think, I think that's what these stats the are saying is that you can put a chair at wide receiver and it would be better than yeah. Kenny Stills. I think that's what these numbers are saying. The chair wow. doesn't hand interceptions to defenders. That's right. Um, the numbers. Now, look, I, I think it's fair because I think, you know, a lot of times we talk about Jason David, Brandon Browner, and it's it's very visible because they're giving up touchdowns. They're getting roasted, and there's a direct correlation between they got beat, they're seven points up on the scoreboard. So I think it's a little bit easier to say, like, those are some of the worst in Saints history. But I, I, to your point, Dave, I think you're absolutely right. That Kenny Stills is playing at a level that is so bad, it's, it can only be de- explained or described as Jason David or Brandon Browner level bad. <laughs> he's, the, he's the Jason David of receivers. And here's yeah. the thing. Like, it takes a wait, confluence wait, wait. of events to have this happen because wait. usually wait. a player this bad, you would just eject them and they wouldn't play anymore. Right. It has right. to be a confluence of events of like, right. they have to be terrible, but the Saints have to have no other option. They have to be so desperate. Right. Okay. Wait a minute, though. I just thought of it. This is the question to end all questions. Jason David covering Kenny Stills. Who wins the battle? (laughs) (laughs) Nice. (laughs) No, I'm serious. Answer that question. Who's throwing the pass? Because if if it's Drew, if it's it's like 2017, it's a dime. It is is a dime. I think Kenny Stills. But if it's it's Jason with with a bum finger, Jason David all the way. (laughs) It's a double move. Jason David's biting on the fake, but then Kenny Stills is probably falling down. Yeah. Mm. Or you know, Kenny Stills is wide open, but he drops the pass. Well, so. actually, well, actually, I, I guess considering the stats, this is really a question of: Is can Drew Brees hit a chair twenty yards downfield with no with nothing else around it? That's pretty much the question. Hundred, well, it, it, again, no, it depends. It's, it, it, it's, 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 it's basically just Brees, it's basically just not. become one of the uh, training camp QB challenges. No, Nola, based on our chat, says, and he makes a good point here. Jason David made some turnovers in between getting burned. Stills That's has right. done has done Jason nothing. David had Stills five has made some turnovers. Here. Stills has made some turnovers for the other team. Yeah. I, I think I like <laughs> the matchup for Stills better against Brandon Browner because even though we know he's gonna drop the pass, he got a shot at being interfered with right. or or penalized held. in some way. Yeah, held. Yeah. So yeah. I I think Stills needs the Browner matchup more than the yeah. Jason Davis. And then he may also literally rob you at gunpoint. I love this. It's like the, the matchup. This is the micro matchup where people would say like the, the 2012 Saints defense versus this Saints offense. But but the but Dave took it even to a micro level of yeah. like Jason yeah. David, other, Kenny Stills. Yeah, find me another podcast that's talking no, Jason David no. versus Kenny Stills. Underhill, come on. Come on, no. bring it, buddy. We need, we need Lions yelling in the postgame show to – Asked Brandon Browner how he felt about getting beat by Kenny Stills. And then trying to whoop, whoop line Yellen's ass. Um, okay, here's a question for you. Uh, and this, this was by a caller from the hotline n- alerted me to this, uh, which we'll get to in a, later in the show, of course. But, and, and Thomas, get this video ready. What's grosser? The Saints receivers play every week or whatever the hell chase hansen is doing at the end of the saints game thomas play that video i haven't, I haven't seen this yet so. <laughs> I, I have, I, have. I, gotta... I know i know exactly what you're talking about oh it's so good oh he's just like it's a loogie look he's like he's playing the game of like how long can i have my spit <laughs> go before it detaches you know so uh, okay, I, yes, I've seen this before. My brother used to do this to me. My brother used to hold me down. He would pin me down on the ground, uh, and then he would do this and <laughs> over like face. over my face. And you know, it was like a game. It was like, could he suck it up, or would he just let it go and get in my face? And it yeah. was a fifty-fifty chance. Sometimes it hit my. Is face that grosser than the up. Saints receivers, though? Uh, no. I, I, Having having been through it and lived through it to tell the tale, uh, no, I don't think it is. I don't think Oof. it is. And people, you people wonder like, why do you have Thomas? What's he do? This is what Thomas does. I got alerted through this in the hotline, and I was like, Thomas, find that video. And Thomas, like thirty minutes later, was like, I got you. 
I see uh, Sterling Moore looking kind of in shape, by the way. And this, you see, you see, you see Chase Hansen there, and they're jumping. <laughs> and then you got Sterling Moore can looking he like play? he's in pretty good shape. Uh, I'm can just saying, can we try him at receiver? I knew he was a corner, yeah. but. <laughs> I remember when we were like, Sterling Moore, not bad. They need to bring him back. <laughs> that is disgusting. They did that bring him back. Disgusting. That is horrible. Like, hey, enough. <laughs> enough. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, like, what are you, I, I mean, I don't know. What What are you trying to do there? I mean, what's. I don't know. <laughs> I, guess I mean, I guess, I guess it is a game. It's just to see how low, how low. Can you, can you get I'm glad you to see Chase. I got to admit, he's got it. He's got it very low. He's got. He's I'm glad to see Chase Hansen is focused there. on the game. That's pretty impressive. at hand, and the game was sucking up loogie, not the actual game on the field. I mean, I gotta that be was honest. Big. If I played Wait. on, if I played defense for the Saints, and I was watching that offense from the sidelines, I'd be you do that too. Wait, show it one more time. How low did he get it? I, let me. He I want to compare it to <laughs> where, like where on his, like where on his jersey. Like it was like down. below the numbers. I there think. you go. I full screen. Know. Full screen. I would say he got, he, got a, he got a good eight inches there. Holy I mean, uh, it's yeah. almost like to the it's bottom. Almost halfway the... halfway down his numbers. Yeah, oh, it's like wow. to the lower end of the four. I mean, that's a quality. I mean, but it's so gross when you suck it back up into your mouth. Like that's. Just I, I see the thing is I would let it go. Just let it go. Like, okay, I got it this low. I know I could suck it up if I wanted to. No, no. I mean, if you're gonna if you're go. gonna play the game, Dave, you gotta play to win. Uh, you play to win the game. But besides the uh, <laughs> Taysom Hill's hurdle, that was the greatest thing that happened in the Saints game on Thursday. Oh my gosh. No, Jordan little little Jordan Humphreys touchdown was uh yeah. was uh, second. Best forgot game. he existed. Yeah, so he's had like two you know, touchdowns. What is he? Two touchdowns, two straight games. Did he have one two weeks ago? Yeah, we got to talk about I the know refs. He had a few catches. We got to talk about oh, the refs God. screwing the Saints again. I mean, I know they got a break on the 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 interception, but the the the, the ref. I mean, the refs. I, like the Saints, Andrew. They're not good enough to overcome. I just for the refs, just be incompetent for both teams. I mean, I feel like I'm just tired of it, man. Like, and, and the fact that the Saints, over the last three years, they've had the fewest penalties on their opponents called. I just like the, the refereeing. It's just driving me. Yeah, so I did some research. Uh, the Saints have had their opponents over the last, since 2018 you know, until today, uh, the Saints have had 307 penalties called against their opponents. Yeah. It, it, it's dead last in the league. Dead last. Yeah, well, that's a holding penalty there, buddy. And uh, and the Packers were number two. They had 26 more Jeez. penalties called. So, yeah, I mean, since 2018, Saints opponents get penalized the, the least in the league. It's crazy. And yeah. over, over a three-year period, 2018, 2019, 2020, you, know, you look at all the other teams, and there's high variability. One, one year, they're super high. One year, they're super low. When yeah. you're the middle of the pack. It's the like Saints, injury luck. The Saints were number one in 2018. They were number three in 2019. And they were back to number one by almost 15 penalties in 2020. So it's happening every year. And I have to say, like, I know it gets a little conspiracy theory and it, it starts to feel a little like, you know, crying wolf or whatever. But I just want to point out that if you look at the Saints... And you, and you look at these penalties, it really does feel like there's a referee official bias against the Saints. And my theory about this is it's actually the genesis of this was the no call. I think Sean Payton was so pissed and how he reacted to that, it was like he was blaming the refs for losing that game, which I he was. And, uh, and it was their fault. And it was their Sorry. fault. But I, 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 Sorry, you changed. don't like facts? He got the he got the rule change right, and so the competition committee had pass interference become reviewable. And for the whole year of pass interference being reviewable, most refs did not overturn calls. Every time they would review it, the overturn rate was super super low because I think refs were annoyed. It was like it's a judgment call. I I don't want to look at this. I, and so a lot of times I think they were abstaining from changing the call just just to be ornery. And so. I think that's where they really started to hate Sean Payton. And I feel like they're exacting, they're, they are hold a grudge against him. That's right. And they are exacting revenge on the Saints because they, they are mad about how that all played out. That's, that's yeah. my opinion.
Yeah, I, Dave, I, like, it, it's just and, frustrating and calling, now. Make no, because make no Saints... mistake, that call was freaking huge. I don't know if Thomas is going to play it, that illegal blindside block. At the time, the Saints picked up a first down. They were down 13-10. to 10. They were driving. It was freaking huge. Yeah, it, was it was as big as the rough and the passer on Caden Ellis where Marcus Williams gets an interception in the end zone that takes away a score uh, a, a couple weeks ago in another game that they lost, which was also huge. So the Saints have gotten killed and possibly cost them two games on official decisions. I wonder who, what, I wonder if other teams, how many letters do other teams get? Like the Saints have the letter from the Tennessee game and the letter from this game. Like, I wonder if other teams, like, do they keep track of like letters what, that they send that you? Yeah, we screwed you on a gigantic call. But the NFL sent them a letter for both of those? Yeah. I, I mean, the know. NFL, they admitted it. They were like, I yeah, think, that, that was. They, a yeah, I think call. if they screw up, they'll, they'll issue a somewhat of a formal apology in the form of a letter. But Dave, did they, do that, did they do that after the Rams no call? I'm just curious. I would assume. I think so. They, Sean Payton talked to the head of officiating in the locker room after the game in the NFC Championship. They called him. They're like, yeah. Yeah, I don't sorry, think there's any. I don't think anybody uh, is disputing uh, that that wasn't uh, a missed call. Dave sounding like an FM DJ is freaking me out. Like, hey, buying him this is Dave Cariello on the ones and twos <laughs> coming right at you. Do I sound like our guy that calls in from our uh, Maryland from the radio? He's our radio voice guy that calls into the Ralph, hotline. I noticed that you have Kenny Stills and a referee as uh, many fatheads on your Yeah, I do. Board. I have Kenny Stills. Yeah, the ball, of course, hits his hands and bounces into the plant that you can't see off camera. Uh Dave, I want to talk. Let's be listen. The Saints are five and seven, and they have a thousand injuries. But it wasn't all awful Thursday. They made extra points. They kicked yeah. the field goal. That's Your right. UDFA son, little Jordan, had a touchdown. Mm-hmm. We had Nick Vanette, proof of life. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So, Dave, how excited are you, little little Jordan? He's going to be Saints' number one receiver as soon as Deontay Harris gets suspended, right? Yeah, well, look, I'm I'm not that excited. Let's let's roll that beautiful bean footage, Thomas. <laughs> look at that. There's a uh, there's a field goal. Is that a field goal? That's, That's a field, field goal. That, that counts yards. for three points right there. We got That's ourselves right three points. Damn. Look at that. There's look little, at it. Little, I mean, little, jo- little, Jordan. little Jordan was wide open. That's that's yeah. Sean Payton going deep into the bag of tricks. That's right. You know what? It's, little it's, Jordan it's, looked the air guitar. Did you see yeah. Uh, you know what? His name's Big Jordan now. All right. <laughs> Dude, he was so wide open. I know. Well, he's been Big wide open like a couple Canola. times. Like I, like I said earlier, he had a touchdown, I think, in the last game or two weeks ago, whatever Look it was, at Nick but... Finette rumbling, stumbling, bumbling <laughs> down the sideline. Uh, look, we are really reaching the bottom of the barrel here because if you if we're really getting excited about these That's highlights, right. these we are really are. nothing special. This is really nothing special. I'm sorry. Where the Nothing hell is Alvin? Nothing special, Nick Vanette. I didn't even think Nick Vanette was a real person. Where the hell is Alvin Kamara? Oh my gosh! Get him um, out here, please. What? what do you mean? Nothing special. A field goal, man. Uh, that's special. true. That's true. We all Thomas worked really hard. Did we get? Did we get? Did we get, did we get? Did we get two field goals? I don't we, know. Look at that. No, <laughs> only one. <laughs> just, yeah, throw, just play a little Jordan go. touchdown this on a loop. Just a loop. Andrew, here's a question for you: Of Davenport. Kamara, Armstead, Ramchek. Who is the most important that the Saints need back? And I don't think the answer is as obvious as, well, of course it's Kamara. I think no, of course I have to Troutman. think a little bit about this. Who, Troutman. If you could have one of them back for the Jets, who, you, who do you want back? Troutman. I feel like the offense is kind of hopeless. So I would actually <laughs> pick Davenport because I think the path to a win is more likely if the Saints just hold their opponent to like, 10 points or less. So I would pick Davenport because then I th- feel like it's more likely the defense has a shot at being dominant. Um, you know, obviously Alvin Kamara is probably the best player of those four, but I feel, I don't know. That's why I'm saying that I would pick Ramchek over uh, Armstead though. Dave, who would you want? And Thomas fire up a poll, do a poll in the, in the, in the, the for Twitch. Uh, if you could have one of them back, Davenport, Kamara, Armstead, Ramchek, who do you want? Dave, you can only pick one. Who do you want? Uh, like, this has to be within the re- realm of possibility. Like, I can't say Michael Thomas. No, you got to pick yeah. those four. Because those four are the ones we're watching on the injury list this week. Oh, you can only okay. have one of them. One of them could get back. 
Pick Who are the four again? Who are the four again? You got Armstead, Davenport, Ramchak. Kamara, Armstead, and Ramchek. Before we get Thomas, who just subscribed? Uh, J Ford uh, 2010 10 subscribed uh, for one month. For J Ford. They know, they know where go. it's at. Thanks for supporting the show. Thank That's you, why Dave Ford. sounds amazing tonight. That's you paid for this Yeti, J Ford. That's right. Thank you. Uh, oh, this microscope. I would... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would... Did I say that earlier? Did I call it a microscope? Yeah. Uh, oh damn, J4 giving whoa, out uh, subs whoa, whoa. left and right. Uh, thanks whoa. for gifting five T1 subs, J4. Maybe he, why is he gifting a sub to Andrew? He's on the show. Andrew was on the show. I don't think. Uh, and don't you, think <laughs> and you too, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you got one. You it's get right, a sub. Mind. You get a sub. Yeah, all you Ford need to is do is just all, watch the show. Be Oprah, in the Oprah chat. Winner, He's going all Oprah with it. Yes, that's right. This is crazy. Somebody, somebody like hit it big at Harris last night. Or sorry, Caesars. This is a Caesars podcast now. He um, crashed our show. He crashed our he, show. Oh jeez. <laughs> what were we? Uh, what were we? T- I forgot what we. Were pick a pick about. a player. Davenport, Camara, oh, Camara. I would pick. Have I I would pick Camara. Like we got to get something going on offense, and I feel like. With Taysom, if he uses his feet, we have a little bit of a spark. So if we have Kamara to help out, we, you know, we can maybe get over that hump, maybe score more than twenty points. I would go. Defense. I would go Ramcheck. I feel like Sean Payton, if he could have one of the tackles back, it would really allow him to do more things on offense, even without Kamara and with Taysom being, you know, having the hurt finger. But I just feel like if if he had one of the tackles, it would really help a lot. I think I'd pick. I think I'd go Ramcheck. Uh, just just because I think it, I would think it would help him a lot. Now, Andrew, the defense it was better. The run defense back to being awesome. Secondary was pretty yeah. good. Lattimore oh, was back to being run. been close to the hundred million dollars they paid him. Had an interception, but the pass rush again was terrible. They're hemorrhaging big plays continuously. Uh, this defense. Give me an evaluation of how you're feeling about them as we head in the home stretch. Well, first of all, the greatest part about the Yeti is that it's heavy, it's big. And so now Dave, is he, he's leaving with to go That's to the right. bathroom, and he's not bringing the computer <gasps> and the Yeti with him. Yeah. Yeah, it right there. Be. So that that's the best part about him getting the Yeti is we no longer have to watch him go to the bathroom. See, I think, I think there was a small subset of, of – People that listen to the podcast and watch it on the live stream, they like Dave going to the bathroom because some people are into that. <laughs> They're in a fetish, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I completely forgot what you asked. The defense. How are you feeling about the defense oh. in the home stretch? Because here, here's the thing. The Saints, they had a really good day today. If the, uh, if the Raiders would have just beat the Redskins and Brian Johnson would have thought he was kicking an extra point instead of a 50-yard field goal... The Saints would have had a great day. They're only a game out of the seventh spot in the NFC. So, look, it seems improbable. But, Andrew, you just talked about it. The way for the Saints to win games is the defense. So how are you feeling about the defense after the Dallas game? I feel like they're playing pretty good. Um, they're, they're giving up too many big plays, though. There was the 58-yard run. Uh, there was a 41-yard pass to Amari Cooper. There was that little tunnel screen with C.D. Lamb that went for 31. So, those are the plays that I think are, are sinking them, and there's no margin for error, and fair or unfair, you know. Um, obviously, the offense, they got to they gotta pretty much play a perfect game. It is the only way that, is the only path to victory right now because yeah. the offense isn't really giving them any points to work with. So, um, you know, unfortunately, it's not enough. And yeah. fair or unfair, you know, I, giving up the big plays is, I think, ultimately going to be their Achilles heel this year because I feel like they go for long stretches where you're right. They're stopping the run or getting three and outs. They're getting the offense, the ball back. But then, you know, the Saints might be down three. They might be down seven. And then, boom, I feel like the, the opponent hits a 50-yard play or something. And that's kind of the straw that breaks the camel's back every time. We've seen that like I know, by the way, that, so that, that, that 58-yard touchdown, Dave, by Dallas, they had like three illegal blocks on this play. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Like, just and then what you, imagine like, that Williams. Yeah, what right, are you right. doing, Marcus Williams? My God, like, what is he doing? Whatever it was, he's like, it was he's wrong. like going for a jog. Yeah, that was. It was a business was decision. Effort. I don't know. He was trying to make sure he got the right angle. Like, you, he had one shot mm. to make that play. 
Uh, and if you take the wrong angle, he, you know, he's you're screwed. You mean the right view the angle the touchdown, right? pushes the runner into the end zone. He literally gave him a piggyback <laughs> ride into the end zone. <laughs> he didn't give, he uh, was near him. He, That's the problem. He literally shoved him into the end zone. He was like, here, go score. Psh. Yeah. So oh. whatever. We yeah, gotta that, do that was the problem with that play. It wasn't <laughs> the fact that that guy made it all the way down there by himself. Uh Alone with Marcus Williams. Yeah, but they, if Marcus Williams, if he wants to be the highest paid safety in football, Dave, you got to okay, make that Okay, you're Marcus Williams' is like biggest NFL. fan. You love Marcus Williams. I do. It, it, I do. Dave I'm Cariello a Marcus Williams is the fan. And I'm like, I, wish the Saints, I hope the Saints pay him. <laughs> I hope the Saints pay him. But your boy, my boy, he's got to make the tackle there. He's got You got to make the tackle. I thought your boy was on Yamada. Yeah, but but Onyemata plays well. I've got a couple. I've got a couple. I've got Ingram. I've got little Jordan. It's a polygamy. <laughs> yeah, we're we're uh, yeah. That's right. What's that Equal religion? Opportunity. No, what religion are we? Islam. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Mormons, right? Mormon. Ta- Mormon. Mormon. Yes, Mormon. Taysom. Yeah, yeah, Taysom has a really soothing voice in his post game. He's like very calm and. Everything. But uh, here's the thing. We, we got to get to the Make-A-Wish segment. We did it last week. It's a new segment we have here. Now the Saints are a football atrocity and winning isn't really possible. We got to find ways to get simple joy in the football games like today, rooting for other NFC teams to lose. But with the Saints, they kick an extra points makes us happy, scoring in the first quarter, uh, things like that. So we got to say the Make-A-Wish. Uh, my wish this week is. The Saints to have a lead, any lead. I don't care if it's three to nothing, two to nothing, seven to three. They had they hadn't had a lead since the Tennessee game. I would really that would be really nice if they'd get a lead. Uh, so that's my wish for the Saints: just get a lead sometime in the game. Andrew, what's your what's your Saints wish? For I the want week? the offense to go an entire four quarter football game without turning it over one time. No turnovers. Not one. That means you, Taysom. Everyone! Dave, what's your Saints make a wish as you just pound food into your face? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I bought this poker mix, but it's like all pretzels. Like, I want like, I want the rice crackers and the spicy doohickeys and the Japanese. You could see this when you purchased it. It's a clear box. I know, but I bought two, and the other one, uh, the other one was a much better mix. And uh, mm. anyway, uh, I didn't know that this I wish thing was going to be a weekly thing. I think I thought we were just doing it that one week. I blew my wad because uh, I, I made like five wishes. Yeah, you really did. Week. So after this week, uh, the only thing I could think of is I wish I was dead. This is miserable. <laughs> Holy crap! End this nightmare for me, <laughs> please, please. So end this. So we were going to have a Kevin Love anymore, update. more, please. It was, so speaking of sad, we were going to have a Kevin Love update because I thought Kevin was going to be on the show tonight, but he can't come until uh, we get back to the regular schedule. Yeah, and well, we so we're sh- just going to update you ourselves. We're just going to throw up All right, Facebook. So, throw it up there. Hold on, hold on. So Dave, are you officially rooting for draft picks? You, no, are I'm, you not, no I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not into like the whole throw, throwing the season. No, no I, we still have a chance. No, I, I, let's do this. We can, let's, let's, let's go for that seventh seat. So you don't want to be dead. I mean, I do. So you don't want the season. <laughs> Look, Andrew, it was just, it was a bit. They're not always doing a bit. <laughs> so bits work, oh okay? God. They're not really necessarily 100% the truth. <laughs> They're just kind of based in reality. I got you. If they lose next week, yeah, maybe I think maybe I'll just die. I mean, I Why can't, is that I can't quality so terrible? It does not sound like that on my phone. Can't root for draft. I can't root for draft. I can't root for draft picks until they're eliminated. And the way the NFC is going, they're not getting eliminated till Christmas. Okay? No, the way like, the NFC they, is going, I think the Saints could go winless the rest of the year and still make the playoffs. There, like I was thinking, nine and eight makes it. But you look, you saw Minnesota. They lost to Detroit today. Like the last playoff spot in the NFC is. Six and the, the the six seed is six and six. The seven seed is six and six. So like there is a chance that eight and nine is going to make it because I'm going to tell you I Washington think the seven seed is six and seven. 
Oh, it, who is it? No, it's it. You, you. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's it's Washington. It's it's San yeah, Francisco, I don't right? They, I don't Six think they've had. A, they haven't had a buy yet. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I refuse. I refuse to let Washington the, the Washington football team get into the playoffs. Well, uh, here's a here's the, the thing. All these NF, NFC bottom teams, like they're not going to go on a run because they are all going to play one score games every week, which is a coin flip. Like the best case scenario for the Saints is they have five games left and it's probably five coin flips. Maybe you go three and two. That's doable if you get some players back. Eight and nine probably doesn't get you in because they've lost a lot of NFC games. But if it's a four-way tie, you never know. So I can't, I'm not, I'm not rooting for draft picks when the Saints could, could still get in. I'm just not. Yeah, well, if they're tied with Washington, they have that tiebreaker. So. Anyway, I'm really I just annoyed blew with my this, nose this, in a this. horrific fashion. Speaking of horrific, no. I'm annoyed with this Utz poker mix. Uh, <laughs> we, w- we were going to talk about Kevin's love life. You interrupted it. Thomas, let's get the Facebook image. Let's go! <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> Thomas, let's get the Facebook image up there. Who is that? That's Fat Zion. Fat Zion. Zion. That's go. Dr. Tom. Right. Kevin. What Kevin Love Fat Zion. Who plays? Who <laughs> plays first for uh, a New Orleans sports franchise? Michael Thomas or Zion? He's at the Ch- <laughs> he Urban Chestnut first. Brewing Company wooing the ladies. Okay, Kevin. so Kevin. Kevin posted on Facebook. This was what's the date? He's back on the horse. This was yesterday. This was yesterday. Nice. Uh, he was at a brew house, and he says, uh, does the date go well? Let's find out. Uh, and I wish that he... Very mysterious. I, yeah. Well, well, because it was before she showed up. I, I mean, we don't even know if she showed up. She might not have ever... <laughs> <That's right. laughs> she might have, May, she might have Googled him. is his date. <laughs> he uh. has a date with a beer. Yeah, but then, but yeah, but hey, then again, beer never disappointed me ever, Thomas. I, I was gonna say, then again, if she doesn't show up and Ke- it's just Kevin by himself, like Kevin's probably like, oh, this is pretty good. This is an okay date. Yeah, just, just me and myself. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I forgot that today was Sunday and not Monday. I was hoping to have Kevin on here because yeah. I wanted a uh, yeah. a love update. So next week, uh, I we'll we'll get a love up. We'll find out what happened on this date at uh, what's the name Tune of the in next week for our. Update on the urban Club. chestnut is that what it says yeah. the urban chestnut interesting okay so the hotline this week oh boy oh boy the hotline was damn it, thank thanks to the random caller who alerted us to the chase hansen loogie olympics mm-hmm. that was mm-hmm. nice thank you for that but some of the audio quality in this hotline it is so bad it made the the audio quality of this podcast seem professional like thomas hit the hotline Pete, this this you audio need to buy the yeti, guys you need to buy the yeti like they i got a blue i got a blue so yeti now the, yeah I, the the quality on this podcast is now uh I thomas before before, the before you hit the hotline who nice. subscribed i you're saying uh, there we go tiger saint 3712 subscribe with t1 stop and, and, and listen You've got I, a little piece of this blue yeti. You. I want to say so. I want to say yeti. something before we start the hotline, Thomas. Our listening uh, listeners have not declined. The Saints ain't won a game in five weeks, and we set damn near set a record in November for listens. So we appreciate you guys sticking with us because. A lot of times you know, people don't want to listen to podcasts when the Saints aren't winning. We appreciate that people are sticking are with awesome. us because they know we got Who the that? jokes. And, and thank you. We appreciate They want to see Dave going to the bathroom. Like, like That's right. right. Yeah. So, <laughs> Thomas, even though Dave's in the bathroom, hit the hotline. It's time for this week's Hottest Takes from the Saints Happy Hour Hotline. For the love of God, can we just make a goddamn field goal or extra point or just a point in the first fucking quarter for a change? Jesus Christ. I'm just going to eat some Doritos. I'm going to go back and watch the rest of the game. Do that. Well, I'm super pumped. Super excited. Last night, I went to bed dreaming about the Saints 
I was dreaming about Gillikin. I was hoping he'd have a big game. And he's kicking ass. It's all that matters. When your punter is on top, you can be too. Remember Ray Guy? Reggie Roby? He's a vet. Ilk. He's the man. I'll rest easy tonight because, because Gillikin is the best. Sorry. Yeah, you know, Dave, I mean, I'm taking this shit. Like Dave was at one time. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, Dallas Dave, might he's doing a homage to have you. this game in hand. They made us, they made us our bitch, but Will Jordan scored and our partner's better. So we own them. At least Gillikin does. Dallas. Let's party. All I know is the same season in 2021. Did you guys see <laughs> Chase Hansen at the end of the game, like, spitting and sucking up that loogie behind Sean Payton? Did, did you, did you, did anyone catch that? So, you know, at least there's that. I hope those reps get syphilis. Well, that was a f-ing great game, huh? I think we can stop the pace of bullshit. Four picks in a row, something like that. Sean Payton, bro. One thing was working. So let's just stop every time we get it. <laughs> Ten yards out of the red zone. Let's just stop running the ball. Run the f***ing ball, bro. Can we talk about Marcus Williams for a second? They'll never mention how soft that guy is. It's like when he's trying to tackle someone, it's as if he smoked peyote. And he's seeing double. Let's figure out what to do with that guy. I want to. I want to remind people that if you're a patron, you get access to the uncensored hotline. You think the regular hotline is bananas? The uncensored one? Oh, spicy, spicy. It's twice uh, as I mean, long. It's was twice there, as long. There, the uncensored there, one is like ten minutes. Was Was there one caller that? was snuck in there that just said something real quick about Ralph and then was done. Yeah. Ralph has syphilis. Is that what? No, I mean? he wanted the refs to get syphilis. He didn't want oh, me to get syphilis. He wanted the refs to get syphilis. Dad, how does your wife know about it, Ralph? See, it's a good thing. It's a good All thing right. we clarified this because I could have swore he said Ralph has syphilis. Okay, yeah, that's what I heard too. My wife. That's good. That's good to clarify that. Why does I like it burn when I pee? Yeah, I like the quick, just, you know, take your shot, get out. <laughs> Although no, I mean, also, listen. wait. Also, I will say, okay, look, I've never like, you've never heard me grunting and pooping on the podcast <laughs> yet. Uh, let's yet. <laughs> it's a bit. Let's not take Dave. it too far. It's just uh, a bit. All right, fair enough. Got me. You got me with my own words. <laughs> got me with my own words. So we got so many. We got well. Let's get to the. We got before. I'm I'm jumping ahead in the script. Sorry, Thomas. Uh, we got to get to Saints trivia. We got to get to Saints trivia sponsored by Bud Rich. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, to Thomas. I apologize. Jesus Christ. Okay, so the trivia this week, uh, courtesy of Bud Rich, as always, the legend, the legend himself, and he tells the man, me uh, the myth, the legend. This one, this one should be easy for you. This one should be a gimme. So the trivia is, Saints had two receivers drafted in the first round be on the field together. Who were they and what year was, was it? Is that, sorry, does that mean they were dra- in the same? Yeah, I'm confused. Yeah. That's confusing. No, I think there, 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 were two, the, well, there were two receivers that started on the field at the same time together and they were both first round picks. I don't think they were. Yeah. Okay, I think I know it. I think I know it. I think did I know Meacham, it. Did Meacham and Stallworth ever play no. together? Ralph? Oh, that I would be a good one. I, I, I think, I think it's I think it's, Lindsay, I think it's West Chan. No, I think it's Chandler was a second round pick, wasn't he? No, I think West, I think it's West Chandler and Lindsay Scott. I don't know Lindsey Scott did so much cocaine, he tried to do a yard line one time. I'm Jesus. just saying. Like, uh, what about Brandon Cooks and Meacham? Did they play together? <gasps> yes. Yes. I like that. I'm going with that. That's my final answer. I'm locking that in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Thanks, the Andrew. Sweep? 
I'm I'm think, I think it's Cooks and Meacham. I'm gonna go. Yeah. With yeah all right. I'm locking that in. All right. So Thomas. what's your final answer, guys? Final answer. I think it's that's Cooks it. and Meacham. Just freaking said it. Cooks and Meacham. Okay. There we go. Okay, let, let's see. Let's see. Boom. That's Andrew. Okay. Let's go. Oh, Andrew. Very Andrew, good, Andrew. That shit. That's a good. Butterich, I like that Andrew. one. I like the ones where you combo. It's like multiple players, and you got to. I like those where you got to think it through, and it's not just like one guy. I like that. that that's we, one of we, my we favorite. Ha, we, have, we have a Ralph super interesting one. Ralph likes to be double teamed. Yeah, I like guys. I like it. Guys, uh, Bud oh, just said job, to I, I just, I just saw Jason. I swear, Jason, I'm not making that up. I, I just saw you, you got this correct in the chat as well. Boom! Yeah, Ralph, Ralph likes to be double teamed by two dudes. Yeah, we can see that on the screen right now. And by the way, Badridge sent me today a super interesting trivia, but I'm saving it for the off season. Like, oh wow! Don't save it. You gotta fire off them bullets while you got them, Thomas. Just saying. Um. All right, so now we get to question. We got we get so many questions every week that we decided we'll be answering those that didn't appear on the main show during the daily show. So keep them coming, guys. Me and Andrew and Dave, we're gonna do like a like a special like mailbag one because Thomas is like, Ralph, I get so many questions and they're so good. Like we got it, you gotta use them because Thomas Thomas <laughs> genuinely feels bad that he has to like pick the ones for the big show and he and he can't use them all. So we're gonna we're gonna start using the we're gonna start using them all and doing like a mailbag. You should, you should right feel away. bad. You're you're mean, Thomas. He yeah. self he self flagellates. He self flagellates yeah. at home. He's Thomas. every time every Thomas. time one of your questions doesn't get asked. Thomas, he gets a, he gets an extra salami this week because he found the Chase Hansen loogie. So I was super excited that he located yeah. that. Um, tremendous work by him. So Thomas, uh, fire up, take it to the top so we can get so we can get to the uh, to, to the trivia questions. Fire up, so you can get yeah. to the top. All right, Thomas. So, uh, give us uh, what we got first up. Okay, so before I ask the first question, I need you guys to close your eyes and go to a dream world. <laughs> okay. Close your eyes, Ralph. Don't cheat. Don't cheat before I read the question. Okay, first question comes from Wes, and he asks... You wake up in a Saw movie and are told your life depends upon successfully completing a TD pass on a corner route. Your options for wide receiver are A. Gail Benson B. Beaker from the Muppets C. <laughs> currently rostered NFL wide receiver Kenny Stills or D. <laughs> One of those car dealership dancing tube guys. Mm. I think I'm going mm. Gail Benson. I'm going Gail Benson. You think Gail Benson can catch a football? I think your life can. depends on it, Ralph. I. I'm going with Beak. Well, here's the thing: who are they playing? I'm going, with I'm going with my man Beak. Yep. You going Beaker? I'm going Beaker. With you. Yeah, I'm. I'm still going Gail Benson. I feel like Gail Benson, she comes through in the clutch. She got the whole Benson. Em she elbowed out the entire Benson family and got everything. It's true. So I'm going to put my life in her hands because when it comes to getting shit done, Gail gets it done. Just going to say. What yeah. is, uh, what do you think? Uh, me. What do you think Rita is uh, up to these days? You Anybody know? I gotta say, like Rita, <laughs> all she had to do I mean, serious. Like, was what, not be crazy until Benson died. He had lined it up for her to get all of it, and she couldn't even do that. Like, can you like she was this close to like four billion dollars? Because the Saints are it's probably more than that, because the Saints are probably worth three, and the Pelicans are probably worth two. So you're talking like five billion dollars, and she was this close and she couldn't she couldn't she couldn't wrap it up and she had to get high with lenny kravitz in the superdome press box yeah 
or whatever. Allegedly. We don't Allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, Thomas. Next question. (laughs) Okay. Next, next question. You don't have to cover your eyes for this one. Uh, asked by Johnny V and Johnny V asks, uh, how much criticism should Sean Payton get for not finding a NFL caliber kicker? Mm. I would say, well, Dave, you answer this one. Well, I mean, like we had one, we had Lutz. Uh, he got injured. You know, it's bad. There was bad luck. Uh, I'm not but sure. What do you what... do at that point? Yeah. Speaking yeah, like to the, the mind, Washington, that Washington, Brian Johnson was their fourth cricketer today. So like, the Saints aren't the only thing. You know. The only uh, but again, but I just, I just don't, I don't. You know, he, he had, he had a kicker. His kicker got injured. His kicker was done for the season. He was left to find a new kicker uh, out of the pile of crap <laughs> that was well, left. Uh, you know, so I'm not sure what you, what, what he expected to do there. So. I, Andrew, isn't I think a more a more fair criticism of Peyton is you knew in the off season Michael Thomas was having inju- issues with his rehab. You should have hedged at wide receiver, and you didn't. And this is what you got left with. I think if you're right. going to criticize Peyton for anything, that is the criticism you should you can level at him. That's fair. Yeah, I hear you. I would agree uh, with that, Ralph. I would definitely agree yeah, with that. I'm with you. Uh, by the way, Brett in Lafayette just uh, said that uh, he wanted us to know that uh, Rita has just fired another personal assistant. <laughs> <laughs> well played. All right, Thomas. Next question. Okay, next question from Saints to Death. Uh, what's more likely? The Saints win two or more of the remaining games or go winless for the remainder of the season? Mm. No, they're going to win. They're going to win some games. Ah, I, I would, because if I they would, go win- more likely if, they go winless. If they no. go winless, it would Damn. be no way. the second longest losing streak in the history of the franchise. The longest one is they start... They started 0 14 in 1980. <laughs> so 14 games is the longest losing streak. Uh, I think they I would think have to go won. from 5 and 2 to no. 5 and 12. That would be 10 losses in a row. They're not, they're not losing 10 in a row. We got so to we're, we're, we gotta be. We have to beat at least the Dolphins and or the Jets. I'll, I'll take just one of those. The Dolphins are playing good now. The I know. Dolphins are I know. Have won like I, five in a row or something. I know. Yeah. I know. So I'll take. Uh, so I'll take the Jets. Maybe who, who knows? You know the Saints. We got to beat. Play. We got to beat the Falcons. That's but what then, but that's Falcons what I was going to say. Super Bowl that's what I was going to say. But and then we're going to get at least another win against one of our divisional opponents. Uh, hopefully the Falcons. But the, so they'll, they'll get at least two wins. The most Saintsy thing to happen would be beat the Jets barely, go six and seven, play Tampa on Sunday night, and house the Bucks. Be seven and seven and get optimism through the roof and then lay a fucking turd the next week and go to seven and eight. Like that'd be that'd be maximum saintiness. Uh and I'm here for it. But I'm never gonna be I'm being dead serious. I'm done with optimism for the season. Like I don't care what the Saints record gets to at any point this season, but you're not gonna have optimism. No, a- absolutely not. I think that's the stupidest thing you could do right now. No, and optimism. I don't it's think fun there's... to be delusional between games. I argue with Monadula okay. all the time. All right. He hates my optimism. It's fun to be optimistic between games. It's more no. fun that way. I mean, it's fun to think about the the positive outcomes and the positive the possible positive outcomes but to really internalize that and to really actually believe that uh i i think even when you're even when when you ralph when you're saying you're being optimistic i think deep down inside you, <laughs> deep, you know deep you really down know in places that. you don't talk about that's right you you know One you're minute. optimistic on the outside you're optimistic for the show you're optimistic for your column you're optimistic for your family you're trying to put on a good face but it's like a <laughs> hostage situation where uh you know you're just trying to make sure everybody remains calm but deep down you're like oh my god we're all gonna die 
we're all going to die. This is this situation is terrible. You do, you do think uh, the Jets are a winnable game, though, right, Dave? Um, yes, yeah, yeah. but I also yeah. think they're a lose a losable game. So like, oh, that, I watched that's the problem. Sure. That's the problem. Yeah, I yeah. watched um, the Jets today. Well, we'll get to we'll get to it. We'll get to it in uh, we'll get to it in we'll get to that in uh, in uh, and I think the yeah, Dolphins are a winnable game, but I also think they're a losable game. And, and every division, game and is winnable. Division, yeah, every game div- is losable. Yeah, I mean, it's, most it's, likely it's, losable. Uh, but know, is, Thomas, next question. Okay, next question from uh, Bruce HC, all the way from Scotland. He asked us like three questions this week. The champ. And he asks. He, he's always active. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Discord. I appreciate wait that. Wait a minute, Thomas. Me. He asked us three questions. How many questions are going to make it on the show? Uh, just one on the main show. His son. The- his okay. son is like a golf phenom. Like, that means he's like the top player in Europe. Okay, but but Thomas, that's two questions that he asked that didn't make it on the big show. So you, that's going to be two self-flagellations that you're going to have to admit. Damn. To <laughs> I want you to. <laughs> Make sure you do it hard. Do it really hard. Because Bruce, Bruce HC is a good patron. <laughs> that one's All right, me. what's the question? What's the question? <laughs> for my back. <laughs> 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 okay, the question is... The question is pretty good, actually. Uh, if you were going to be kicked in the nuts by an NFL kicker, oh, which 2021 Saints kicker would you trust to hit? The target and therefore opt out from. Okay. Ooh. Which kick Saints kicker would you trust the most? I mean, does does Will Let's count? I mean, because depends. Is it from field goal distance or extra point distance? Because if it's extra point, I'm not taking. Well, I guess I would take Brian Johnson because I would be confident he would miss. Yes. (laughs) This is this is who do you want to eliminate who 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 do you think is too good Baby Gilligan. so you want to and, and will lutz's groin is probably too injured already to kick me in the nuts too i, I feel like you would also have sympathy i don't know, I don't know. I, well does but does will lutz count in this does he does will lutz count as a 2021 kicker because if he does that's my answer I, mean, I think he's in play that's well then that's the easy answer yeah. I think Will Lutz knows what it's like to have a hurt groin, so he would he would have <laughs> mercy on you. I guess I guess look, I, I got to go with the guy, the current kicker that holds the job. I, I would say that I guess I trust Brett Maher to make a kick more than anyone else. Certainly not Rosas. Are the Saints? You think you think the guy they got? You think Maher or whatever his name is? You think he's going to be the last kicker we have this year? Or are they going to go one more? Not there's no chance he's the kicker of the last game of the year. Next question. <laughs> okay, last question of this show comes from Alexander Berkeley. It's a pretty pretty long one again, and he asks: Since there seems to have been an accident, uh, has the WHO investigated the lab in New Orleans where all the samples of, of finger, foot and groin plague are experimented with? Also, when will Goodell call Sandra Bullock to teach NFL refs what a blindside block is? That's pretty well, I think the answer to... for Goodell, that'll be never. He'll never call Sandra Bullock. Uh, to teach people what a blindside block is, but Dave, answer the first question: Should should did the Saints they have some sort of injury plague that's sweeping America? No, I, I it's just just shitty luck. I hate to say it, but just I shitty mean, luck. It's annoying to me with the injuries because I was listening to a podcast and Bill Simmons was like, "Well, every team has injuries. I don't necessarily think that's the thing with the case. and they're like. The Packers have injuries. Yeah, the Packers have had a bunch of offensive line injuries, and they lost Randall Cobb for a stretch. But you know who they didn't lose? Aaron Rodgers, except for one week, and they got ho- and they got and they looked terrible that week. Like all these teams that have a ton of injuries, they have a lot of injuries, but they're not as bad as the Saints because most teams will be like, oh, they have a ton of offensive line injuries, or they lost a bunch of receivers. It isn't lost offensive line and receiver. And quarterback, you know, and so that's just that annoys me. But by the way, are, are we are is this whole Aaron Rodgers thing? Is that over? Are we done? Are we like uh, everybody's forgotten. 
pretty much. Nobody, nobody's going to talk about it anymore. No, and no. If he, NFL, good, the, if, he, if he finishes the season, you know, puts up some amazing stats, maybe he'll be MVP again. The NFL is amazing how they just get the media or the media and fans just move off of everything. And all we care about is the games, man. We don't like Deshaun Watson and his off the field stuff because he's not. We don't care. Like who? All Deshaun who? NFL I don't even know fans care about. about is the games. I don't even remember what happened. What did Deshaun Watson do again? I forgot. He was he kill really some disgusting with uh, massage therapists. Oh yeah, right. And like he Antonio Brown used a fake the vaccination card. People like whatever. Don't even care. Like, but at least he's Probably, not going to play. He might get prosecuted. It's like a federal yeah. offense. Yeah. Okay. Good. So. Good. Yeah. Hope it happens. Okay. So now we got to get to predictions. Thomas, put up this. Put up the scores from last week. What, what's the? What's the, where, where are we at with the with the prediction game? Yeah, I know. I got at least two points. Yeah. But I know Andrew locked it in, so I don't know what that did for everybody else. Oh yeah. We'll see. Let's I mean, see I, the points. The points are yeah, pretty interesting this week, Ralph. Oh, I got three points. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, and oh, everybody you too, got, everybody and got you three too. points except for Ralph. Look at that, a three-way tie. Uh, actually, actually, we didn't notice that, but Kevin predicted the exact same score as you, Dave, last week. Yeah, I know. That's what I was so saying. Now I'm, and... now, I'm th- now I'm last? God, wow. I'm losing yeah, hell. Yeah, yeah. Hell and, doesn't and, even watch the games. And since Andrew was the only one to log the game last week, and he got it right, then he got three points instead of oh one. Oh my god! Yeah, All right, buddy. so, so mm. I got. Oh, I, I didn't even look up the. Uh, I didn't even look up the line this week. I gotta. I gotta look. Up. <laughs> it you forgot matter. your prediction already, Ralph. It doesn't. Matter. No, I gotta look up the lines for the for the week. You know. Um. I, All right, I so should, s- should I should I give my prediction now? Yeah, well, I think you should, Andrew. Okay, you're the first face on the. Uh, so uh, I, I've got the Jets winning this one, twenty-seven seventeen. My turd of the game is Taysom Hill. I think, uh, despite my wish to have zero <laughs> offensive turnovers, I think he will struggle to take care of the Ooh. football. There will be more turnovers. And uh, I think the Jets are playing a little bit better than they were earlier in the season. I watched them a little bit today. They are so. They didn't look they, great, but they they look better. Um, they, so. they the thing with the Jets is their defense probably looks good enough to stop the Saints, but they are so poorly coached. And I'll give you an example. They're playing Philadelphia. It's third and twenty, and they're playing press man. And Philadelphia ran the play that kills the Saints, where they drag Deontay Smith across the middle. He catches it, gets the first down. It's like. It's third and twenty, dude. Why are you playing press man? But so the Jets are really. Ralph can't though. say anyone's name right. Yeah, I know. Deontay Smith, huh? Deontay Smith. But anyway, the point is the Jets are are crapperly coached. But Dave, who you got? They, by the way, J, the by the way, the Saints are a six point favorite over the Jets. That is ridiculous. Wow. No, I, I think that look. Vegas knows. Vegas knows. I think that, that sounds ridiculous. right. Um. Yeah, I'm not gonna over. I'm not gonna overlook the Jets. I don't like Andrew said. They're, you know, they're playing fairly decent football now. They're not the Jets. I think that most people assume they are, but uh, I just I still think the Saints are a better team, top to bottom. I think we're a better coach team for sure. I think we. I think that's. I think that's the X factor is the fact that we've got Peyton and they have. I don't even know who. Robert Sala. No, oh, yeah, okay, great. Yeah, he's gonna last a while, I'm sure. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, I don't think this is gonna be a walk in the park. I think it's gonna be a tough game, but I think the Saints can actually win this game, get right. So, I think I said the Saints twenty-seven. Uh, no. no, Saints Saints twenty-four. That's right. I can't give them yeah. that many points. I'm crazy. <laughs> Saints twenty. Saints twenty-four. Jets twenty-one. And I said, uh, player of the game, my boy. Third of the game. I know, player of the game. Right, right. Yeah, player of the game. My my boy, Mark Ingram. I think it's about time he has like a hundred plus yard game. My lover, yes. My lover. Player of the game. (laughs) My lover. Now that I have my new mic, my lover. Thomas, you're the best. You've been on point tonight. (laughs) 
I love oh, it. Ingram, I love um, you so much. Here's the thing. I, I gave this pick to Thomas, and then I was I like Andrew, that. and I watched the Jets, and I'm you like, change your mind again. And I was like, their defense is pretty bad, but I think they could stop the Saints. But here's the thing. The, the Jets' offense, if they can't run the ball, they are going to have a really, really hard time against the Saints, I think, if the Saints play hard, which the Saints should because it's kind of like a mini buy. I got the Saints 23-16, to 16, and here's the thing. As crazy as it sounds, like any success the Saints have these last five weeks is pretty much Taysom dependent. So I feel like any time I pick the Saints these last five weeks, Taysom's got to be the player of the game because if he isn't running and making plays, the Saints ain't doing crap on offense. So I got my – I'm going opposite of Andrew. I got 23 That's pretty, 16, that's and I got star a game as Taysom. That is a pretty, pretty sound, logical, legit pick. point that you just made. Yeah. Well, just about the, the Taysom thing in particular. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the Saints, the Saints, they're going to just stumble backwards ass first into a win because they're going to have one of these games. They're where like the team's Kramer. They're the like ball. the Kramer they're, of the NFL now. Another team's going to turn the ball over a bunch of times. Like, it's going to happen. Like, they're not going to, the, the losing streak will end eventually. So I picked the Saints. So uh, I didn't lock it in, though. Uh, but Kevin, what, Thomas, give us Kevin's pick. What do you think? Who do you think Kevin picked? I think Kevin. I think he picked the Jets. He's been he picking the against Jets. the Saints for yeah. a while. All now. year, yeah. I he's, he's not picking Jets. the Saints. I think he picked. Uh... Shit, though. I can't think of it. <laughs> Who was the old, the wide, the wide receiver they used to have? He was from Long Island. Uh, like back in the eight, Vinny, uh, not Testaverde. Al Toon. <laughs> no, no, Wayne no. Krebet. Yes, Wayne Krebet. Yes. He picked Wayne Krebet as the star of the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so Kevin. Nice. All right, Thomas, hit it. We Mario should let I have, Mario I, I Davis think revenge should, game. I think guys, we should let Kevin uh, tell us himself and uh, a little oh, warning. Oh, yes, a video. A, video a, little, warning. a little warning, Dave. Kevin uh, watched the show, watched the previous shows, and he heard you talking shit about him. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so let's hear it uh. from the man himself well well it seems it was only three weeks ago this is kevin doing his wrestling or maybe four shit. that i had zero points in our little contest and now look at me tied for first place with dave and andrew eight points Huh. Almost like I know what I'm doing and I've lulled you all into a false sense of security. <laughs> Jets, 17. Saints, 7. Oh, Turn of the game, well. Cam Jordan, who will most definitely tweet when the game's over. 24-hour rule. Get back to it. Tape study, film study, blah, blah, blah. He's so I think right. the date went well. I think it did. He's <laughs> so did, right. Did we didn't talk that? about. Was that we didn't talk about it? But Cam Jordan is washed. Oh yeah, completely. Yeah. What's going utterly. on with like? Is he s sitting in a crib or is he on a futon? Like what's yeah, going on? Weird. And he's got the neck pillow. It's the neck weird. pillow. Yeah. Is that a my pillow? It's not a my pillow. God. <laughs> I think that's a my pillow. That dude. Um, yeah, Kevin win. Kevin winning the prediction contest is. It would be it's ha hashtag on brand. It would be hashtag on brand. He doesn't even watch. The well, he probably watched Thursday because <laughs> it was a national game. Like Kevin's probably watched like six games all year. Half the games, maybe, maybe. I'm 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 embarrassed. I would say that of those six that he watched, he didn't watch him start to finish. Either. No. But the thing is, it's like, Kevin's like divorced from it, and he's just like, the Saints on. are terrible. I'm not picking them. Yeah. Like, 
<laughs> Hopkins, huh? Yeah, man. It's tough. I feel bad. Like, I can't. The thing is, like, if the Saints were just 30% less injured, they'd be a lock for the playoffs in the NFC. Like, the NFC is so bad this year. It's so bad. Yeah. Just ugh. All we need is Drew Brees to come back, guys. That's all it takes. All we need is a miracle. <laughs> all we need is Drew. Hmm. All we need is a miracle. All we need... Hmm. It's true. How does that sound on the Yeti? Does that sound good? <laughs> not I will tell you how it sounded. Why is that quality so terrible? It does not sound like that on my phone. I was thinking, too, you know, I was messing around with it with this Yeti now. I can also record, like, some guitar stuff and some singing stuff. Oh, I, can, I can make oh, some better great. jingles. Yeah. <laughs> Look out, <laughs> it's out for that. Out for yeah, that. Look out for that this offseason. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. We got to get to the clip of the week. Thomas, did, did the people at least grace us with a clip of the week <laughs> yeah. for today? <laughs> yeah, we had three clips, and two of them were you scolding them for not clipping anything. <laughs> <laughs> so we basically, I can say we had one clip. And with clip of the week, we go back to predictions, guys. Um, I, bigger. I went... <laughs> I went... Last week, I really believe the Saints are going to beat that Buffalo. Uh, and I thought the Saints would get to 6-6. Six and six. I really did. But now they're too injured. And clearly, my picks have gone awry. Uh, I don't know the score. But my turn of the game, I went to a higher power as a turn of the game. I, bl- I, I made God the turn we of may the game. Get, we what? may get canceled for that. <laughs> Can't I feel like I should get a point for that. I mean, how do you know it wasn't God's fault? <laughs> I knew. See that? I didn't. Right. Did I not say something at the time? I mean, that's like that's a cop out pick because that can go so either way. Out. You could say God. You know, God's responsible for everything. They had if they had won, God clearly wouldn't have been the turd of the game. <laughs> if they had won, well, I'm saying okay, I guess it's true. You don't get a point for that. Sorry, God, I should have. You will be awarded I should, no I should points. many points. You should, have, you should have picked the refs. And then, oh, you have I, then I would have ar- agreed for three points. <laughs> Don't give him ideas. The refs is always a good... For the turn of the game, for the Saints, the refs is a solid pick. Yes. Every oh, week. We- weekly basis. Literally solid. <laughs> so Solid turd. All I need is a miracle. <laughs> Dave. I need- so the last time the oh, yeah, Saints we did, lost, we, we didn't mention uh, Kenny Vaccaro retiring to do, do video. Sports. Oh, esports, yeah. Why okay. didn't he take well, Kenny we Stills we just, with him? We just there we go, Brett. Got it. We, Done. We just, we, just, a, we just mentioned it. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. What's his uh, team's uh, Twitch channel? All I need is it it's you. I need like <laughs> yeah. the Saints haven't lost six in a row know. since the Katrina year, and I pretend the Katrina year doesn't count. If you go back further than that, they haven't lost six in a row since the end of the Mike Ditka era in 1999. So uh, they gotta they gotta get this turn they gotta get this ship turned around. But as always, the podcast with the most jokes and the most fun, no matter what the Saints are doing, is us. Uh, us thanks us, for joining us, 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 everybody. Us you should become a patron, support the show. Remember, if you sign up as an annual patron, you get two months for free, and you get the Saint Survivor mug. You should do it. It's amazing. So thanks to Kevin, who is MIA, for Dave, for Andrew, for Thomas running the show back in Poland. He was amazing tonight. He does amazing work every week. He's the best producer in the business. Uh, And you guys supporting the show allows us to have Thomas helping us out. So, guys, thanks. Remember, kids, don't shoot your dick off. Until next week, the bar is closed.